It's a chilly winter's afternoon in 1964. Men slowly make their way along a path through the hills. They are keen to get home. Sunset is fast approaching. It will soon be dark. A man is carrying something, a small box. They need to get it somewhere safe. Its contents are priceless. Jingchuan County lies high up in Gansu province, close to the border with Shanxi. Every year, the rains wash the soft soil down the gullies into the river Jing, smoothing the hills into soft undulating ridges. According to historical records, 600 years ago, torrential rains destroyed the ancient town of Jingchuan and buried it under a layer of soil washed down from the hills. The old town lay forgotten until a shock discovery made by a group of farmers 50 years ago brought it to the attention of the whole country. November 1964, several farmers from Jingchuan County are busily working in the fields. Suddenly, someone calls out. Jing Lin Yan and the other farmers rush over. They gather round and peer into the darkness. What's down there? For some, there's only one answer, treasure. The mystery deepens when Jia Lin Yan and the others find steps leading down into the ground. The people stand round the hole wondering where the steps lead. For now, they just talk and make wild guesses. Not one of them is brave enough to step down into the darkness to find out. Finally, Jia Linyan's father and another one called Jia Jiaofu pluck up the courage to go down the steps. Slowly, carefully, they go down into the darkness. In the flickering light of the candle they take, they see brightly colored asparagus painted on the walls. Then they come to a doorway, the door frame richly decorated with strange magical patterns. A stone door bars their way. The door swings open into a chamber. In the middle, there is a box made of stone. As they walk towards it, they begin to realize what it is. The two men stagger to the surface, bringing with them the stone box. The villagers gather round, looking at the mysterious box up and down, eager to know what's inside. 
the two men prize it open. They find another box. This one, made of bronze, is decorated with engraved patterns and has a lotus motif on the lid. Jia Lingyuan takes a closer look at the bronze casket. On one side, there's a lock and a thin chain. On the end of the chain, he finds a key. Someone wants to try the lock. Zhao Wanfu, the village head, stops him. It's late and getting dark. They would have to wait until they get back to the village to find out what's inside. Meanwhile, someone reports the discovery to the local police. Since the local police have never dealt with buried treasure before, they contact Zhang Yingwen, a district official with responsibility for cultural affairs, for advice. Zhang Yingwen is a graduate of Lanzhou University's history department. He's worked for Jingchuan County for 10 years and knows most of the district's places of historical and archaeological interest. As the police break the news of the discovery, he senses that a major discovery has been made. He sets off for the village accompanied by the two police officers right away. Despite his excitement, Zhang Yingwen is a worried man. He remembered that the villagers are unlikely to realize the significance of their discovery. Also, they won't know the correct way of dealing with archaeological artifacts. What if they open the casket before he gets there? They need to hurry. Sadly, Zhang Yingwen is right to be worried. Before he arrives, someone opens the casket. Inside the bronze casket, they find another casket, small enough to hold the palm of a hand. It's made of silver and ornately decorated. But the shape of the thing is shocking. It is shaped like a coffin resting on a rail platform. Jia Linyan tries to lift it out of the bronze casket, hands gently shaking. All he manages to do is to pull off the lid. They gasp, wide-eyed with wonder. Under the flickering light, something gleams and glitters. It seems to be a golden coffin. <laughs> It was a truly wondrous discovery. Four little golden coffins, neatly stacked inside each other. It must be very valuable. A glance at the exquisite decoration on the gold tells them their discovery is priceless. But they are puzzled. They know that people are buried in coffins. Who would fit into a tiny coffin like this? Jia Linyan opens it cautiously. Inside, he finds 14 golden hairpins and a gourd-shaped crystal bottle. Something falls out as Jia Linyan turns the bottle in his hand. Fourteen tiny objects, no bigger than grains of rice. The men scratch their heads at this new twist to the puzzle. Zhang Yingwen and the two policemen arrive. Zhang can barely speak when he sees the stone casket and reads the inscription on the lid. 
he knows the farmers have made a major discovery. The casket contains the remains of a Buddhist saint. A chance discovery. A most mysterious treasure. Three major discoveries in an old town in 49 years. You are watching the mystery of the underground palace in Dayun Temple. The villagers have discovered holy relics. Holy relics are teeth and small pieces of bone. They are found in the ashes of a cremated Buddhist saint. These relics are gathered up and put in a reliquary. Often relics are put in shrines so people can worship the remains of these dead saints. The tradition dates back 2,500 years to the Buddhist saint Sakyamuni. When he died, his body was cremated. Tiny bits of bone found among the ashes afterwards were taken out and put in a shrine. Zhang Yingwen examines both the stone casket and the smaller ones found inside. They all fit neatly inside each other. An inner coffin containing the body of the deceased would be put inside an outer coffin. These coffins were made of a number of materials. Most often, wood, bronze, or stone was used. Gold, silver, jade, and other precious materials were used when the inner coffin contained the body of a very important person. The number of outer coffins used to encase the inner coffin also reflected social status. The more layers they had, the more important they were. But this puzzles Zhang Yingwen. He has heard of kings, emperors, and other important people being buried like this. Why would somebody bury the relics of a Buddhist saint like this? Is the inscription on the stone casket telling the truth? Are they really relics? If so, They've uncovered an extremely rare archaeological artifact. Zhang decides to take the relics to his office. It's late by the time Zhang gets the relics to district headquarters. Zhang tosses and turns all night, unable to stop thinking about the discovery they've made. The words engraved on the stone casket echo through his mind. Could they really contain the relics of a Buddhist monk? It's hard to believe. Zhang Yingwen shares the relics with a good friend of his, Liu Yulin. Liu Yulin has just graduated from Gansu Agricultural University. Although he knows nothing about Buddhist relics, he takes a keen interest in archaeology. When Zhang Yingwen explains the relics, Liu Yulin begins to see their significance. As Zhang speaks, Liu Yulin understands just how unique and important the discovery really is. Although 
Along the edges of the casket are lines of tiny characters. The words are not only small, the lines are dense and closely written. Worst of all, they're covered in dirt and grime. Working out what the writing says is going to take months of careful study. Zhang Yingwen gets to work. He buries himself in books and searches through records and annals, trying to find out all he can about Buddhist relics. He learns that the hair, bones and ashes of Buddhist saints are all regarded as sacred. And intriguingly, a body would be cremated crystal form if the chemical reactions take place in the fire. These crystals are also sacred. They are called Sarira. Zhang believes the 14 little objects resembling grains of rice must be Sarira. Zhang Yingwen tests to find out if they really are Sarira. He also notices something very interesting about the inscriptions on the lid of the casket. It says that the casket is a reliquary belonging to the Dayun Temple. Was there ever a Dayun Temple in Jinchuan County? History records that Dayun Temples were built throughout the country in 690 AD. Jingzhou was an important place in those days. It was the last important town on the road to Chang'an, then the capital of China. Like other important places, Jinzhou had to have its own Dayun temple. But where was it? The area of Jingchuan has suffered from flash floods throughout history. At the beginning of the Ming Dynasty, a flood completely destroyed the town of Jingzhou. The old town was completely buried under silt washed down from the hills. Records indicate the town stood on a site near the River Jing. Zhang Yingwen wants to find out if discovery of the relics has anything to do with the ruins of the Dayun Temple. The next day, Zhang and his two colleagues visit and carefully examine the site of the discovery. They find evidence that pagodas once stood there. Most importantly, a pagoda stood on the exact spot where the relics were dug up. It is clear to Zhang that the relics were buried under a pagoda. This means that they came from the underground palace of a temple. Underground palaces symbolize the Buddhist paradise. They are among the most holy places in Buddhism. Only the most sacred and precious religious items were put in these underground palaces. It is more evident that the discovery of the relics is extremely important. Nothing trivial can be stored in the underground palace of a Dayun temple. The words inscribed on the casket lid are telling the truth. While the inscription tells people what's inside the casket, what of the dense lines of barely decipherable words round the edges of the casket? Zhang decides that they might contain the key to understanding the lost underground palace. Back at district headquarters, he gets to work interpreting them. He painstakingly cleans the casket. Gradually, as he removes the dirt and grime, the inscription becomes clear. The words were written by Meng Chan, a famous Tang Dynasty minister of state. In the inscription, he praises Empress Wu Zetian and commemorates the creation of the reliquary beneath the temple in the first year of the Yanzai period. The inscription on the casket lid also mentions Da Zhou. Da Zhou was the name given to Empress Wu Zetian's dynasty. Furthermore, the script on the body of the casket refers to Yan Zai, the name of the 11th year of the Empress's reign. That means the Sarira was buried more than 1,300 years ago. Now, Zhang Yingwen is certain 
The contents of the crystal bottle found in the casket are the remains of a long dead Buddhist saint. Zhang Yingwen's fieldwork and thorough historical research confirm that the casket comes from the underground palace of a Daoyun temple erected on the order of Empress Wu Zetian. The farmers have made a major archaeological discovery. There is a sensation when word gets out that Buddhist relics have been unearthed in Jingchuan County. In September 1971, famous Chinese scholar Guo Moro himself assesses the find and announces that the casket and its contents are treasures of national significance. 23 years after the discovery of the casket in Jingchuan, another turns up in the underground palace of the Famen Temple in Fufeng. Although these relics are buried in the same way as those found in the ruins of the Dayun Temple, evidence suggests they were buried about 100 years later. The relics, the crystal bottle, and the caskets that protected them for more than a thousand years are now on display in the Museum of Gansu. Nowadays, it's easy for visitors to stop by the museum to admire and learn about these priceless treasures. It's easy to forget the effort that Zhang Jingwen put into these artifacts. Without his fieldwork and historical research, the significance of a chance discovery made by a few farmers in a Gansu field in 1964 would never have been revealed. It deserves to be remembered. Zhang Ying Wen has now passed away. Nevertheless, the words inscribed on the casket are his legacy. It was Zhang Ying Wen who revealed to the world just how much importance was Etienne placed on Buddhist relics. It was her personal interest that brought these elaborate reliquaries into being. But why were these relics so important to Empress Wu Zetian? And why did she have them buried in Jingchuan, far from the then capital city of Chang'an? What is the relationship between the Dayun Temple, the Empress Wu Zetian, and the bones of a Buddhist holy man? Fast forward to December 31st, 2012. Farmers in the village of Gongqi in Jingchuan County uncover an underground palace. On a brick, they find an inscription that indicates the presence of more than 2,000 relics. Once again, Buddhist relics turn up near a Dayun temple. Do they have any relationship with Empress Wu Zetian? Join us for part two of Mystery of the Underground Palace in a Dayun Temple.